Bruce Allen Camp at the Virtual Warper Bullet with a review of Burnt Ends at Costco. So if you're one of my longtime YouTube viewers, you may remember that back in 2018, I did a review of this product, which was called American Barbecue Company Brisket Burnt Ends. Don't ask me why I still have this package around in my office. I keep things like this for just this purpose, I guess. But I did a review of this back in 2018. I thought it was, uh, I think I went like this. And I had a uh, viewer who said, you know, you should try it again. I like it a lot. Give it a second chance. So I did another review of this product in 2021. And I thought it was a little, a little bit better than this. Um, I'll put links to those reviews down in the description if you want to see them. Although I don't know what the relevance is since you cannot buy this product anymore at Costco. But now they have this product. It's, it's on fire. It's called uh, Mission Hills Bistro Smoked Beef Brisket Burnt Ends. Um, my Costco here in San Jose is making a big deal about these this summer. There's a big display of them in the store in a very prominent location. They're selling for $12.79 a pound. This package cost me $19.95. It weighed 1.56 pounds. Uh, on the front, you see it says fully cooked. It says ready uh, in as few as five minutes. And it includes some barbecue sauce and it's USDA choice meat. So it sort of seems like it's on the right track and it looks pretty, pretty kind of delicious in the picture, but we know pictures can be deceiving. So turning to the back of the box, uh, Mijnil Bistro smoked beef brisket burnt ends were inspired by the best barbecue experiences this great country has to offer. God bless America, burnt ends, baby. This is the way food should be. Nothing fancy, just fresh, high quality ingredients with amazing flavor, enjoy. Um, it's 420 calories for a serving. A serving is measured out in one cup or 170 grams. The heating instructions, two ways are offered. One is a microwave option, which basically you uh, take the plastic package of meat out of this plastic container, you poke a hole in the top, make a slit so it can vent. You microwave it on high for two and a half minutes. You, um, it's funny, they say, carefully fluff the pouch to separate the burnt ends. So break them apart into individual pieces because they do tend to stick together. Back in the microwave for another two and a half minutes on high. Remove and carefully open up the package and enjoy with their barbecue sauce. They don't mention anything about heating the barbecue sauce. I think you'd want to because it'll be stone cold if it come from the refrigerator. What I think is supposed to be the, the better method of heating is what they call the stovetop saute method, which I think is really unusual. It starts out the same as the microwave. They want you to uh, slit the top of the plastic package. They want you to microwave it on high for two and a half minutes so you get a head start in the microwave. They want you to carefully fluff the contents of the pouch to separate the pieces. Then they want you to go to the stove top and they want you to heat up a skillet with one tablespoon of cooking oil over medium heat. And when that's nice and hot, they want you to pour the burnt ends out of the package into the skillet. They want you to heat it in there for 45 seconds, then flip the meat over to the other side and heat it for an additional 30 seconds. Now I'll show you this process in a second. Um, but it's a total of, what is that? That's one minute, 15 seconds on the stovetop, which to me strikes me as a lot of effort for a minute and 15 seconds, but you can be the judge. And then finally you remove it from the pan and you enjoy with the barbecue sauce that they didn't tell you to heat up, but I would heat up anyway. So let's look at what's inside the package. So here's a shot of the package opened up. The sleeve slides off and you have this plastic tray containing a vacuum packed pouch of brisket chunks. And the first impression I get from it is that the chunks are huge. Um, this is the thing that kind of bugged me about the previous version as well. They provide really large chunks of meat. They're not the size that you would think of as a brisket burnt end. And I'll say more about that later. I have a theory as to why they probably do this. Um, the other first impression I have of it is where's the sauce but if you remove the meat you'll see that the sauce is in another packet down below so thank goodness the sauce is included so let's go ahead and make these bad boys and I'll show you what I did first thing is I started with a couple of 
soft potato rolls and I lay them out on a sheet pan to put them in the oven uh, to get them toasty. I put a little bit of melted butter on them to help with that process. This picture shows the barbecue sauce dispensed into a bowl and I heated that in the microwave for just a couple of minutes at 30% so it didn't explode in the oven. It's ready to go with the sandwiches. So here I'm preparing the uh, skillet with a little bit of peanut oil, one tablespoon as prescribed on the box. Have that ready to go. Now in this picture, you can see the result of microwaving the package for two and a half minutes. I put the slit in the top, left it in the tray, put it in the microwave, two and a half minutes. It kind of puffs up a little bit. Here you see I'm trying to fluff the chunks of meat, just making sure they're separated. The package is very, very hot, so you need to do this with tongs or maybe with a couple of, um, of oven mitts or something like that. And now is the moment of truth. It's time to transfer these brisket chunks into the hot skillet. So I very carefully open up the package and I pour the contents into the ripping hot pan. And you can see it sizzles and pops and makes a lot of noise. And uh, it, it uh, is quite a spectacle to see this in the pan. Here I'm flipping it over after the 45 seconds on the first side. It's making sort of a mess around the kitchen. And finally, they are completed. They've done their at least one minute, 15 seconds in the hot skillet. Here I've laid them out onto a cutting board and uh, you can see that they are very large pieces. My theory on this is that they think that, um, that perhaps they will heat better, stay more moist if they provide you with large chunks, but then they're really not edible in that form. You certainly couldn't put them on a sandwich like that and they're not meant to be a, a knife and fork item. So you will need to break them up. And so you see here, I'm starting the process of doing that and um, they're very hot. And so it's kind of difficult to do that without putting on some kind of a protective glove. So I've done a, a cotton glove with a, a latex glove over the top of it. And you can see in some of these pictures that um, some of these are not the most tender little guys in the world. Some are. I'll give them credit for that, but some are not. I think some of them, especially the larger chunks, they're not cooked through. They're not, uh, they're not fall apart tender. And I'm not, in a product like this, I think I'm looking for that because that's what most people would expect. Super tender chunks of brisket. And by the way, I'm just 100% sure these are brisket flat. They're not brisket points. So they're not super fatty and luscious and unctuous like a, piece of brisket point would be their chunks of flat, which is very common to use in burnt ends these days in commercial products. Very hard and expensive to do it with brisket point. So you're always going to find this being brisket flat in a commercial product like this. I even see it that way in many restaurants. So it's not super unusual here, but it is a tougher piece of meat, especially when it's not been cooked all the way through to tenderness. And that's what I'm finding here. And um, some pieces are stretchy and some pieces are just tough and I have to actually take a knife to them to break them down. Finally though, I go ahead and get those buns in the oven. I get a little toast on them. They're not perfectly toasted. The edge is toasted, but not the center part. That happens sometimes. And I went ahead and I built myself a sandwich. And here you can see that I have uh, created my photo worthy, um, you know, shot of chunks of burnt end arranged on the bun with some of that sauce across the top as well. Uh, here you can see me tasting a bite live for the camera. You can tell by my reaction. I am, I'm not spitting it out. <laughs> it's, uh, it tastes pretty good actually. I would say that overall, based on what you see here on this shot of a cleared cutting board, that we, uh, we ate it all. Uh, Mrs. TVWB and I really liked the taste of this product. It had good flavor, had good seasoning. I really like the flavor of the barbecue sauce. Uh, it had a little bit of heat, not a lot, but it did linger in my mouth. So uh, it's just a basic straight ahead Kansas City tomato based barbecue sauce with a little bit of heat in it. I liked it. As far as the chunk size goes, I don't care for that, but I think I understand why they do it that way. And I don't really mind breaking it up. However, it was not as tender as it should have been. Some pieces were, but many of the larger pieces were not. And another thing that I really didn't care for was the, the reheating method. This idea of the stovetop seems like a lot of effort for very little time. I don't know what effect it really had in a positive way on the meat. 
uh, and it did leave a mess on my stove top. I think if I had to do it over again, I would have just followed the microwave instructions. So Mission Hill Bistro burnt ends at Costco. I'm gonna give it a, a thumbs up, a qualified thumbs up because uh, it did taste good and we ate it all. Uh, I don't know if I would buy it again, but in a pinch, if you're looking for a burnt end product and you don't wanna make it yourself, this could stand in in a pinch. So that concludes this video. I wanna thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you very much. Uh, if you have any comments about this video, if you've tried this product and you have your own opinion about it, pluses or minuses, please post them down below in the comments. And I try to look at all of them and answer as many as I can. So thanks for doing that. And I would also appreciate you liking and subscribing to my video. If you got this far, please like it and please subscribe to it. It helps other people find my videos on YouTube. And until next time, take care, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.